What's up guys, welcome back to another video, hope you're all doing well today and welcome to 2023 Lambretta Lins. Not Loretta Lins as such, for copyright uh, reasons of course. However, it's nice to have a game that's kind of sort of named after me. A, a track that is not a game, well, I'm actually getting all tongue twist already. Um, but look how beautiful this is, this is actually really nice and vibrant. Uh, so this is the 2023 layout made by Kevin Fuehler and he actually also done a 2018 layout from back in the day. And this is a track on the store and when you purchase this you do get the 2018 layout for free as well which is really really cool. Uh, I'm also going to be riding, I have no idea where the pits are actually to see where my bike is, oh there it is just over there. Uh, I'm going to be riding the factory KTM 125 as well which I haven't tried yet. So we're going to kill two, two birds with one stone in this video. We're going to do a new track and new bike for me. So I hope you enjoy it. If you've been putting off buying that new MX gear or you're just looking for some new daily MX related clothing, then head on over to fxrracing.com. Code MXPR underscore LINS15 at checkout will give you 15% off all motocross and lifestyle products. This code is applicable to the European, Swedish and Norwegian websites and not Canada or the USA. And whilst I've got your attention, you may as well subscribe to the channel. It's just one click of a button and it puts a big old smile on my face. Hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Like it was actually really good timing for uh, Kevin to release this when he did, because obviously real life Loretta's has, has just finished now. He probably had some really good reference material, to be fair, with the amount of like live video coverage. I hopped into the streams myself every now and then, but I found that it didn't matter what day it was, like one, two, three, four, five, doesn't matter what day it was on. Whenever I tuned in, It'd always be the boring races that I really didn't care for, like 65s or like 50s, etc. Uh, the only thing I did find funny was on the extremely muddy day watching the 50s trying to get out the start and they were just having to push the bike or paddle it with both their feet everywhere. I did feel very bad for them. But to be fair, I felt more bad for the parents that travel that way and then they have to just tr try and get a bike to survive those conditions. But yeah, um, I, I don't really keep too up to date with up and coming talent in the US as such. I usually just watch like the AMA stuff and or in Supercross as well for example where they've got the the amateurs program just kind of see who's fast there and who's coming through. Uh, I'm recording this speaking of the AMA just after the uh, Ironman race is all said and done so if you've not watched that yet and you don't want any spoilers please uh, do feel free to, uh, to pause this or close it and come back to it later. However I'm so happy. I'm so happy that Jet finally got it done. Uh, we I was sitting in a call with like Dad Shoes, Chicken, Reese, and Charlie, and we was watching when Chase was getting closer and closer. Very, very nerve wracking. I do feel a bit bad for Chase. I feel sorry for him because he rode incredibly well and he got absolutely shafted um, by that one lapper, like Bryce. She is it Bryce Shelley? I think it was. Uh, got really, really unlucky. It cost him so much time. Um, but the, the two of them. Uh, it, I can't remember who it was that mentioned it in Discord, but they said it's basically like an MX Bikes race, so instead of having Skills and Jackson ahead and then everyone else being 40 seconds behind, it's it's Jet and Chase and then Plessinger's 40 seconds behind instead. Uh, imagine being so good that you can cross the line, roll about a little bit, ghost ride your bike, get back on the bike, and then go to the mechanics, well not mechanics area, you know what I mean, but podium area before Plessinger's even crossed the line. That is actually outrageous. It's disgusting. So I'm very excited for the upcoming Supercross season. Uh, I'm very excited to see how Jet does indoors compared to outdoors. I don't think we're ever going to see uh, a perfect Supercross season, like we've had a perfect outdoor season this year, just because of so much chaos that can happen on the starts or getting caught up with down riders, etc. Um, there's, there's an element of luck involved in Supercross, I think. Uh, whereas even in outdoors, if you do get unlucky enough to get an awful start or get caught up in a in a pileup, etc., you've got the time to bring it back. Whereas Supercross, it's a lot more start dependent, I think. Uh, but that's enough about the AMA from me. Obviously, well done, Jet. Well done, Hunter. Overall, very happy for the uh, for the two Aussies. Uh, this track so far, y you've seen my first like raw gameplay. I I've not spun any laps of this up until this point, and I'm actually barking. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's just because. The, I'm vibing with this this factory bike. It does feel fast. I will say for a 125, compare this to the OEMs. This bike feels so much faster. But uh, I kind of expect that from factory bikes. You know, they are they are meant to be faster. No weird things so far. I've been kind of flat landed into some roughest or sand sections. Not even a flinch of the front end, which I'm really really enjoying. And after my last video on the the factory bikes on the 252 strokes. It seems like the, the general consensus was just how reliable these bikes are. It seems like people are able to be really consistent on them, which is something that 
I feel like I've been lacking on the game recently, uh, using my last two aerial rounds as an example. Uh, Spuds Creek, I felt really, really good. You know, I had a really good EU, a really good NA, managed to get the overall in both of those, and just somewhat felt like I was getting decent at the game again. And then we skip a, a week later, where we're riding on Iron Man, and I couldn't go in a straight line to save my life. I was wobbling all over the place, getting incredibly frustrated at the game as a whole, and I, I, I don't know what's put the blame on really. I don't know if it's just all in me and my thumbs on the controller. I don't know if the track was like a weird one for physics. I, know, I noticed that when the erode was kicking in that the, uh, the ruts that were forming were a lot more narrow than usual too. So a little bit different in that aspect. Um, yeah, I, just, I, I think I'm probably just washed up to be honest. I, I do need to spend more time. Although in saying that, I do have 50 hours in the last two weeks. Which is, it is starting to creep up for me. Usually I'm chilling around 30 or 40, but you know, 50 this time. So we're, we're getting up there. The time's been put in. Uh, I'm excited uh, for the, the future uh, and seeing how the SMX goes and WSX carries on going. Uh, I'm guessing that we're going to carry on the championship in-game, even though if the rumours are true, WSX has been cancelled IRL, like the main sponsor pulled out, I have no idea, but yeah, I'm hoping hoping that continues, it's just a chance to like, get more prize money at the end of the day, and I'm, I'm all for it, uh, so in terms of overalls in the outdoor championships, well actually, let's go through the whole year so far, so in Supercross, I got second overall, just behind Hurls, in 450 EU outdoors, I got P2 behind Skills, and then in NA, I wasn't able to get the job done at the last round and overtake Wash. I ended up in P3. So, consistently being best of the rest, as you know, a bit of a P2 slash P3 merchant these days. I can't remember off the top of my head where I got in NA Supercross. I just, I didn't do that many rounds. It would be surprising me if I even finished inside the top 10. Uh, but yeah, that wasn't my main priority overall. But one thing that I'm excited about, which I've mentioned very, very briefly in the last live stream, is... Whether it comes to fruition or not, it's all kind of rumoured at the moment, but uh, Stone Rider, who is the person that hosts and runs the uh, the European series, so Chicken's been doing North America, Stone's been doing EU, uh, he has said himself that he wants to split the regions. Uh, so, when let's say 2024 comes around, it's Supercross time, if you are from EU, you can do EU, if you're from NA, you can do NA. And then I'm guessing everybody else can just kind of pick and choose what series they want. But if you do one, you cannot do the other. And I have a few thoughts and opinions on that. There are definitely pros and cons. Uh, the pros for me is the I feel like the majority of the people that beat me these days are Americans anyway. Uh, so it would remove a lot of that competition. Of course, that is a con as well, because the races won't be as entertaining. It might end up being like a, a two a two person championship rather than like a four or five person championship uh, other cons as well is it obviously limits the amount of content i can produce for you guys i'm doing one live stream on those race nights rather than two um and then the other thing which i'm not sure how it's all going to work i'm sure if they'll give us more details further down the line is what do you do for example if you're like chicken for example who's from australia what, what's, what series does he do? Does he get told which one he can do, or does he get to pick one or the other? And then the other thing is, let's say you are from NA, but you work night shifts, so you can't do the NA races, uh, you can only do the EU races. Do you then get a special treatment, and you can do EU rather than NA, or is it a case of everybody gets to pick which one they want at the start of the year, and then they have to stick to it? Because then you've got the issue of it kind of becoming like 250 coasts where everyone just tries to pick which one they think will be easiest and go from there so i'm, I'm interested to see uh, what all of the uh, the rules are but again i'm sure we'll get that in the near future but it's been a it was an interesting season this year i i'm sure it's no secret everyone knows that i didn't particularly enjoy the aerial season i had a lot of fun in the back half of the GP season uh, once I put the 250s down I've just realized that I'm not a 250 rider at all I'm gonna be 450s for life at this point uh, depending on what bikes we use actually because uh, that we could even get to a point where maybe the series start using factory bikes over OEM bikes so I'm just spitballing here I'm not trying to say anything I'm just saying that that's all down to like the individual series owners and what bikes they want to run overall I mean this 125 right now I, I feel really good. I feel like I'm flowing really nicely. Uh, I'm sure you guys can see that it, it's, it's going quite straightforward. So this isn't a difficult track by any means. Uh, I'm not sure if I've even like crashed yet fully. I don't know if I had to reset at all. 
Uh, the Ten Commandments, pretty straightforward through there. You can kind of double and triple your way through, no problem. Uh, even flat landing some of these jumps into the sand, the bikes handle itself really well, not getting any weird and wonderful moments. There's some jumps that I've been scrubbing too hard and like really, really casing without thinking about it. But again, that just comes down to... My, I, it's hard to explain, so I feel like when I'm recording these, these videos, because I'm talking... I'm, I'm just relying on like muscle memory to play the game. I'm not really like looking at what I'm doing either. I'm just zoned out and the thumbs are just taking over. Uh, I'm also thinking about what I'm saying rather than what I'm doing. So if you see me, for example, end up slotted in the same line three laps in a row, or if there's one particular bump that maybe I come up short on over and over again because I'm scrubbing rather than stretching the jump out, that is exactly why, because my brain doesn't correspond and go, oh, we're at this part of the track, last lap I came up short on it, I should try and stretch it out next time. Unless I physically tell myself that, I usually end up doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, so into these 10 commandments, you want to go double, triple. Can you triple again? After that you can, little dab of the back brake, that was really nice. Notice the, the gyro seems quite powerful in the air, like if I get on the brake quite hard, it does dip the front end, which is really, really nice. So this is a jump here that I need to stretch this. Let's go. Ah! Oh, I didn't have the greatest of run, but I think we we, we kind of got over that. It wasn't clean, clean. We had a little bit of a bounce, but better than a full-on crash. And again, I'd say that's quite a, a hard landing. You know, that's fourth gear, trying to go as fast as I can, coming up a little bit short. And the bike just took it like a champ. Again, I feel like if I had a better run over that first jump, I could probably triple that jump as well. Um, but this track is built really, really nicely, and it's very, very pretty too. And I just have to say to uh, Kevin in the video, because I've I added him in a, a different Discord before, I accidentally stumbled across one of his like very, very first tracks that he made, and it was literally just a track on grass, and that was it, you know, barely any objects, um, the terrain was really, really lacking in detail, it's basically just dirt and then grass and that's it. Whereas if you then compare it to what he releases now by looking at how like pretty the textures are on this track and the off track as well. I mean, I'm running no reshade and the it looks very, very colourful and bright, which is really nice for me. Um, obviously, I'm, I, there's a chance I might be adjusting the colour gradient in the editing process for this video. I've been doing that on a couple of videos recently um, just to make it look a bit prettier for you guys watching because I imagine it can get quite dull after a while um, but yeah it's, it's a really good looking track lap time seem to be about 150 ish I'm sure if you was on um, a bigger bike and actually riding better than I'm riding while trying to talk you can probably get that down to maybe 140 ish I would say maybe the, the top boys are up there um, but I should probably give it a go on a big bike at some point but it's actually a really good 125 track I mean I'm not sure if it's probably a bit of both with how the corners and ruts are built as well as how well this bike's handling. I feel like I can get into these corners and just absolutely rattle the life out of the ruts. I mean, I completely blew that inside just then, but that, that, that held on really well there. Can we get up and over this this time? A little bit further. Oh, no, yeah, that was, that was quite a bit cleaner than the time before that. So it's doable. Uh, so if you want a little bit of, and I guess, two-stroke action in your life, Definitely give these uh, these one two fives go. They are really good fun. I might be able to triple this now. That was a good scrub. Yes, perfect. Oh yeah, we're flowing. Absolutely loving this. Uh, so really good track all around. And massive shout out to Kevin as well for chucking in his other um, Lambretta Lins layout. No idea what I'm going to title this. It's, there's got to be a play on words, surely. Because every time that I've watched Loretta Lins or even hearing any of Loretta's songs in real life, for example, even before he released his original Lambretta Lins track layout, I'd always do the play on words and say like Loretta Lins instead. But anyway, I, whether you want to call this my track or not, it doesn't matter. Kevin, Kevin, thank you very, very much. I appreciate you dearly for releasing this and including technically two tracks and giving your older one for free. Uh, you, you didn't have to do that, but it's nice to see that you care enough to make people not have to kind of buy almost the same thing twice, if that makes sense. Uh, again, massive shout out to the factory, uh, the factory bikes, guys, because this thing handles really, really well. Uh, I did see other people mentioning that, because I asked in my 252 stroke video, are the bikes kind of like pretty similar to each other or is one OP compared to the others. Uh, some people were saying that like the KX and the Yami are fairly slow but the Honda and the Suzuki are really good. Uh, if, if this KTM 125 is bad by any means then 
I'm very excited to try one of the bikes that's good, because this thing feels rapid. I wouldn't expect to be tripling my way through the commandments on a slow bike, but either way, good stuff, really good fun. And the tyres, super grippy as well. I don't think I've stood out once at all, so good job all around. Uh, thank you very much for watching, guys. I do appreciate it. Have uh, a lovely rest of the day, whatever you're up to. Uh, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I really do appreciate it. And I'll catch you boys in the next video. Peace.